Hi, my name's Rachel Andrews. Welcome to Everyday Athlete. On this week's video, we are taking a look at the transition between swimming in a pool and swimming outdoors. So you might be thinking that the thing you've most got to consider is the change in temperature. And it is massive. So uh, indoor swimming pools in the UK are 29 degrees Celsius, whereas swimming in the water in winter, probably in the sea, is about six to 10 degrees. And in summer is anything between 15 and 20 degrees Celsius. So it's still considerably cooler than swimming in, uh, in a pool. So there's some considerations there, whether it's that you go for a gentle habituation and you just go in for a short period of time over quite a long period to get yourself ready to swim further. Or perhaps you pop on the neoprene, you wear a wetsuit, booties, gloves, everything, and you should be fairly well good to go. I mean, it will be a shock to the face though. But there are quite a few other considerations and I'd like to run through those now. One difference you're gonna notice is in water quality. In a swimming pool, the temperature is checked regularly, as is the level of the disinfectant that they use in the water to keep the place hygienic. Obviously, outdoors, that's a little different. We've got what we're given in terms of temperature, and in terms of water quality, it's up to us to check. So one thing I would say is, probably the biggest hazard is when we've had heavy or sustained rain. And then you will want to be checking the water quality, either via some websites, which I'll put below from the Environment Agency or Surfers Against Sewage. Um, and the other thing you might want to do is just a, a rule of thumb, having a look and a sniff of the water here, you might be able to see, we've just got some bits and bobs floating around, dust and pollen and things. There's nothing too worrying in there for me to be to be concerned about getting into the water. Um, I tend to leave it probably three days at least after heavy rain and then I will take a good look to see what's in there and to see if there's anything floating um, debris wise that I'm worried about. So when we've got heavy rain the things that I'm concerned about are potentially sewage overflows if the um, sewage system and drainage system becomes overwhelmed then they release into the river sadly. Um, the other thing is runoff from fields, so anything where, you know, animals are living, then there's uh, plenty of matter that could be floating into the water. The main things that I'm interested in uh, swimming on the coast is what's going on with the tide, because the area I swim in, you need to swim in and around high tide, because otherwise it's just mud. Um, and I'm also interested to know what the wind's doing, because Depending on what the wind's doing will depend on how cold it is getting changed, how rough the water might be. If we've got wind coming from one direction and the tide or current flowing in the other direction, then the water gets lumpy and that can make it a little bit more trying for swimming. Um, so looking at those two, the wind, I check out windy.com and for the tide, I use My Tide Times. There's lots of other websites and apps out there. Those just happen to be the two that I really like using. Other things we need to think about outdoors that we don't need to think about indoors are the potential for getting sunburned. And surprising as though that might be in the UK to anyone that's watching from abroad, we do sometimes get sunburned here because sometimes, like today, the sun is shining. So with that sun cream, we need to also be thinking about the effect it might have on the, uh, on the waterway itself. So if you're in the market for buying some more sun cream, check out some that are environmentally friendly. Uh, to try to minimise any damage we're doing, we're doing to the environment. It's really important to think about biosecurity when we're swimming outdoors. So when we do go for that swim, um, if we're wanting to go for more than one swim in a day in different locations, then we need to take a complete change of kit to make sure that we're not taking any tiny microorganisms from one waterway into another. Making sure that we check the clothing that we've been wearing, remove any uh, weed or any kind of flora or fauna from it um, and leave that where you've got it. Uh, wash it out thoroughly and not into the drainage system so wash it in a bucket or something uh, and then perhaps tip it onto your garden um, and then dry it thoroughly before you use it in a different waterway. When we swim in a pool safety can pretty much be taken for granted. There's always someone there watching you while the pool's open and they're ready with the techniques to be able to come and rescue you. When we're outdoors it's down to ourselves to look after ourselves. So we need to make sure that we're swimming in a way that is safe. The fact that there's one of these emergency throw lines 
which isn't even in sight of the water, is small comfort for me. I would definitely be thinking of myself as being self-sufficient and you should think along those lines too. The other thing about getting into a swimming pool is that the entry and exit points are well marked and obvious. So they've got steps getting in with handrails and uh, if you're feeling athletic you can hop yourself out over the side. In the outdoor environment that's quite a bit different. Um, I've chosen to come to this beach here because it's got a nice gently shelving entry and exit. It's the same all the way along and I've walked along it so I know if I get in just here, that if I swim further down, then I can just get out just as easily further down. But what I will do, which is different to being in a pool, is I'll wear something on my feet because stumbling up pebbles, small as they may seem, is really difficult on cold feet and that's when you risk getting an injury, something you definitely don't need to consider in a swimming pool. When we're swimming outdoors, it's really important to keep a good lookout for traffic and to make sure that we're visible. So I will take with me a tow float which has got my belongings in it, to be honest, so it's a tow float dry bag. Um, but just making sure that anything moving around can see you. When you get in, get in slowly and just wait for your body to, uh, to let you know it's ready to swim. And that's when your breathing has come back to normal. Luckily, it's not too cold today, so uh, I'm almost ready to go straight on the off. Something that can come as a bit of a shock to the system is visibility in the water. So in the pool, we used to be able to see every hair and plaster on the floor and uh, being able to see that black line to follow. When we're swimming in the sea or in a river, it's not always the case that we've got clear water. In fact, it's a treat when we do because then we can see who else we're sharing the water with. Now, don't let that worry you that you can't see in, you can't see the other residents, because actually the other residents are much more scared of you than you are of them. So they are really likely to have got themselves out of the way. By not being able to see down though, that has a serious implication for swimmers who are used to swimming head down uh, in the pool, perhaps doing distance and fitness training it really affects your ability to swim straight. I was really surprised that when I switched to outdoor swimming from being a really strong indoor swimmer, that I just couldn't swim in a straight line. So you end up having to, you find new techniques and learning how to sight, meaning that you, every few strokes, you're taking a look up at perhaps a fixed object. Your technique can change, you might find the outdoor swimming you tend to do quite a bit more heads up and that might be just to take in the view and the scenery especially on a swoosh there's per virtually no point in putting your face in the water to swim hard when the water is flowing underneath you and giving you a really good ride looking up and seeing everything you're flying past is brilliant fun but sometimes we do want to do some serious training and when we want to do that uh, going somewhere where there's less flow, less current, so going at absolute high water will tend to be where there's a high water stand and it will wait about a bit before it starts to flow back out again. You might find yourself wearing goggles just because you normally do. I tend to use ones which are like sunglasses because I find that is a much more comfy way to swim and uh, makes sighting easier for me. But you might find that the clear ones are better. But whatever you do, wearing goggles doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> that your face is going in the water. It might be that they're just useful on a windy day, stopping you getting um, salt water splashing your eyes and such. But certainly for me, the biggest thing is let me have a really good view because I'm not squinting. The other thing uh, I always wear when I'm swimming outdoors, especially if my face is going in the water, is some earplugs. Um, and that's really just to keep the cold from touching the insides of my ears and to stop any kind of infections or damage because of that cold. If you check out the video on why to wear earplugs, 
you'll see what I mean. I'll link it just above here. I guess there are a few other hazards that we need to think about when we're swimming in the uh, outdoors. And that can be wildlife. And as I've mentioned, you don't often see it, but sometimes you do. And I've certainly been surprised on uh, one or two occasions when I've had a seal pop up. So with the seals, I tend to try and keep well out of their way. I don't mind having a look at them, but they're huge. They're quite intimidating to see and they're very curious. Um, but I don't want to get too close to them because I don't want them thinking I'm impinging on their territory. So I try to steer well clear, just have a little look at them. Probably the next most scary thing is when you touch some vegetation in the water. That can be really quite scary and it makes you jump because if you're used to pool swimming, you're certainly not used to things that you can't see touching you in the water. Footwear has certainly made a huge difference for me because by having my feet covered, it's not anywhere near as triggering if I touch some leaves or some, um, some kind of uh, reeds or floating matter with my feet, then I just don't really feel it. Just here by the park, another thing that I am uh, always on the lookout for is whether I'm going to get joined by someone else's dog. Um, luckily I haven't had any swim up to me and try to rescue me. They more likely swim halfway out, look at you and swim off again. But that is a risk that um, dogs want to come and join you as well. But on the wildlife front in the UK, there's nothing really that scary that you can't uh, be mindful of and get yourself out the way of. Just observe it from a distance, but don't interact with the wildlife. I think it's important I mention that sometimes swimming outdoors can give you a bit of a fright. I've done it to myself on a couple of occasions where uh, the water's been deeper than I expected, even though I'm floating on the top, looking down, it suddenly dropped away and I felt worried. Or something has touched me on the leg. And the way I find that's easiest to bring myself back to enjoying the swim is just to float on my back for a while in a big star shape, looking up at the sky and regulating my breathing, just getting myself back to normal so that I can carry on with my swim. Probably switching to breaststroke, uh, at least for a few uh, for a few strokes and then if I wanted to switching back to front crawl. It doesn't need to put you off completely on the swim and you can rescue the situation if you have a panic. Changing facilities vary immensely from place to place and by facilities I mean a bench or a bush often. Some places on the beach there will be uh, showers provided, here that's not the case so I'll be doing that when I get home. Uh, but one thing that you can do is bring yourself a plastic bag to stand on to get changed. Uh, in terms of how to get changed out in the open, you can wrap a towel around you and uh, cling onto that with your mouth or your armpit. Or you could sew a couple of towels together to, um, to form a bit of a robe that you pop over your head and then uh, your modesty is preserved if you want. Um, or you can get something like this, which is a, a changing robe, purpose made with um, kind of toweling on the inside that will dry me off. So it's up to you how you do it, but what I would say is get yourself out of the wind as far as is possible because it makes for an easier change and uh, less if your kit blows away and it's also a lot warmer. I've tried to outline the main differences between pool swimming and outdoor swimming and I hope you can see that most of them are pretty easy to deal with and even if you do get a bit of a worry on you can just lie on your back, float and take in nature. Just think Getting out of the pool and into open water, you get to have bird song, you get to look at the changing seasons, you get to be out in the weather and uh, be that good or bad, and you get a lot of fresh air. I hope you'll give it a try, and if you do, let me know in the comments if you're going to take that first step into outdoor swimming. I'd love to hear where you're doing it, whether it's in a lake, in the river, or in the sea. Please tell me in the comments. And if you've enjoyed the content, check out my channel, I've got loads and loads of videos about outdoor swimming. And if you did like it, please consider subscribing to my channel uh, by clicking on my face and dinging the little bell and you'll know when the next one's out. And I'll see you next time. Bye.